Hello, everyone. The video today is about how I structure my code for algorithm trading. I want to create a template that I can use as a starting point every time that I'm going to develop something. Because the idea is to get into the details of the strategy and have the rest of the code ready. There are sections that, for example, how to select the stock that you're going to trade or the universe, how they call it, in Quant Connect, or when to enter, when to sell. Now, I, I don't want to get in details of a working, fully working algorithm. It's just the starting point for the template. In order to do that, I need to add some kind of strategy so I can show you the whole code working. Now, the strategy that I'm going to present is very simple. It's not ready for production. Um, and this is a, as a disclaimer, even if you see that it's working now, even if you see what you like, that's no indication that it's going to be good for production. More testing has to be done. It needs to be polished. And, and I don't even think that is a really good strategy. For the sake of the video, this is what I'm going to do. The strategy is a trend following strategy based on multiple EMAs or exponential moving average, uh, where I'm going to enter if they are a stack, positive stack. That means that, for example, 8 is above 21, above 55, above 233. But also the closing price is above all of them. If that condition is met, I'm going to buy. If any of those variables is off, I'm going to sell. I developed a code that is very simple for think or swim, so we can see it visually first. And you can go and get this code in my soup stack. The idea, how I said it again, um, if I put four EMAs, let's go back here, for example, um, exponential moving average. You want to put eight? Um, I'm going to add 21, 55, and 233. This is Fibonacci. There is no a specific reason why I chose this one. The, the overall idea is that I want to have some EMA that is quick, medium quick, medium and long term. If I plot this, but also how I said, the closing price has to be above all of them. Based on that, I am highlighting the areas where I'm going to have a position. You can see it here. And below, you can see the floating p &L. This, uh, right now, I can tell you that the drawdown is kind of big on this one, but in overall, it looks like it's good. Now, in Thinkorswim, I can check only one. It's individually, one by one. If I go, for example, Tesla, that's what I see. The end result is also positive for now. Let me go to Palantir. Let me go to something that has been going down. For example, PayPal. In this one, the results, the results are not good. At least if I show you in the short term, this is going to be one year. Let's go to seven, uh, 17 months. Yeah, still not good. So that's, that's the whole point of the back testing with an algorithm is that I can review statistics for a lot of these stocks. And in my case, it's going to be 400 stocks that I'm going to be trading. I, and I'm going to see the overall result for that. Okay. So going back to Hood. In this strategy, I'm only trading long. I'm not trading short. My idea is to be off if the stock is going down and to be long if it's going up and it's a, it has a strength. 
the strategy doesn't do really good on the sideways if the stock is consolidating either. But 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 again, this is not the whole point of this video is not to talk about the strategy because this is not a good strategy. It's just uh, to show you how to organize that. Now, going to Quantum Connect, I'm using Quantum Connect because they are super simple to use. The API is very clear. And also because I don't want to be developing a platform and deploying to production and deploying, creating the communication with the brokers, all that. That's that's not what I'm trying to do here. I want to use someone that already is working on that, that has been working for in that for years. And I, I only want to concentrate on my strategy. That said, this is the anatomy of the code. The first variables, they're going to be basically how much I want to risk, 2%, for example, per trade. And I'm going to save a, a dictionary for the stock data. And the stock data, the idea is to encapsulate each stock so they know they contain the information needed to, to trade. They're going to know if they are ready to be traded or to be sold. They're going to provide information if, it's, uh, for example, relative volume is good or not. So th this unit is going to contain everything that is needed inside to decide if it's tradable or not. The universe is going to be top 500 stocks and the price that I'm going to trade is going to be between five and 500 bucks. If I go to initialization, well, this is the date that I'm going to be trading, for example. The amount of cash that I'm going to start. I don't, I don't want to go to get fee on this security because nobody has fee nowadays. At least uh, Trump and Robin Hood, and they don't have. And also, I'm going to be using margin. I'm going to simulate for Charles Schwab in the margin account. The resolution is going to be daily. Now, I'm going to define the two functions for the selection of the universe. And I'm going to set a warm up for the maximum EMA that I'm going to use. The idea is that I want to subscribe and I want the algo to always provide me the data and to be ready when I need it. All right. So going down, the first thing that we see is implementation for the universe, the two functions. The first one is a course. I want a stock that has fundamental only between the price that I'm looking for and I want to sort by dollar volume. I want the most tradable and liquid stocks. And then this is a code that is commented, but the idea is if you want to troubleshoot one by one, you can force the universe to be, uh, to contain only one or at least of these stocks. The final second step for, to refine the universe. And here I want the market cap to be above 500 million. And the minimum dollar volume is going to be 50 million. Okay, so this is the code. And that's going to create my universe. Now, there is this event that is going to be checking all the daily stocks, symbols that are added to the universe and remove. If it's added to the universe, I want to add it to my dictionary. So I subscribe to all the data. If it's removed, then, well, I want to liquidate it and I want to remove it from my uh, dictionary. Now, before we move to the on data, let's go to the stock data. In the stock data, I'm going to initialize. And that's what I'm saying, that this is a template. You can use the same template for all your strategies. Again, that fits this kind of technical analysis uh, trading. Um, and then only start adding or removing to what you are tracking based on your strategy. So in this case, I'm going to be tracking all these CMAs. 
but also uh, I want to track the close value for the stock in the last day. And also I want to track the volumes because I want to keep the moving average for the volume so I can track the average volume. And that's because I'm using relative volume arbol to sort my entries. Right here, this is a way to declare all the indicators. Register the indicators. I'm going to use this variable to know when all of them are ready, or at least the most important one. In this case, will be we would need to measure this one. That is the top one. And then I have our ball. I'm going to be risking 2% per trade. That means that if I want to be fully allocated, I'm going to have top 50 stocks to trade. That doesn't mean that I'm going to have all the time those 50 positions, but it means that that's the maximum that I want to allow. So in order to do that, I need to sort the whole pool because maybe I have 70 opportunities at the moment. I want to get the first 50 with more, with higher relative volume. I want to know if the stock is trending and this is important for my entry. I want to know if it was trending. So if it's trending currently in the last bar, it's going to return true if all the EMAs, they are stuck and the close, they are above the EMAs. I want to do the same thing, but for the previous day. For that reason, I'm using here current, I'm using here previous. And the idea is that I want to know when there is a change of condition. condition. It's like a breakout, right? Or a crossover, let's say crossover. When from the condition is no met to a condition is met in that point I want to enter. Very simple. And then I want to exit if for some reason, well, it's not trending anymore. Right there. This is the template that I use. Now, from there, I start adding my own indicator, custom indicators in another classes. Um, I need to sometimes to declare more functions or properties to satisfy my strategy. But this is a good template to start that can be copy and paste and then just start changing inside. Now, on data, it's going to be triggered every day. I believe that is after the, the market closes or midnight but also it's going to happen after all the raised, raised indicators are updated. Now, check always that the algorithm finish uh, warming. The idea is because you want to have all the data, you have to, you need to have all the information, all the moving average populated. And then the first thing that I'm going to do is check for exit because I want to free cash if for some reason, one stock is not good anymore. I'm going to move it. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to free that cash. And then I'm going to start looking for position to enter. Quant Connect already has um, a synchronous operation. In this case, this is synchronous. And the idea is that because I don't want to add complexity to this uh, code, I want just to go one by one, sell it, and then start looking for the opportunities, buy uh, as long as I have money to buy. Again, how I said it is uh, give me all the entries, positive stack that are not invested already, uh, sort by descending based on the relative volume. I'm going to get that list and I'm going to try to buy. That's the whole algorithm right here. It's a template. That is useful and uh, just to start quickly. And then I run this algorithm from 2020, January 2020 to uh, December 2021. And these are the results, uh, 83%, for example. 
The drawdowns are now pretty. There are like 15% drawdown at some point. But in the super deep on 2020, how you can see, we almost did a half position. And that's the whole point. So let's try to avoid when the market is going down and have maximized the position when it's a good time. If I go to the overview, um, the sharp ratio is 1.2. Average win, um, the win rate is 37%. The loss rate, 63%. But what happened is that the average win is 12%, 0.12%, and the average loss is 0.05. It's a two point something. Now, a more detailed report that they provide, they're going to show you what are the good months, what were the bad months, and also it's going to compare with the benchmark that in this case is uh, the SPIDER, SPY. The annual returns, asset allocation, etc. How it perform, um, for example, with COVID, with COVID post run, but also with the mean season 2021. Okay, right, so this is the whole code. I'm gonna add to my sales stack the code for Thinkorswim, but also the code for uh, Quant Connect. So let me know what you think about the video. And if you like it, if you want me to create more.